Liberame Domine de morte eterna. Wow. wow. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Less Kevin. More tech. From utechit.com. What an intro. I mean, unbelievable. First of all, we get the upgrade. Yes. We have Christine here. It's, and, then <laughs> and then what an intro. That is quite an upgrade. So it is a tremendous upgrade, let me tell you. BC knows me as Duke now, though. Oh, the Duke, right. No longer Christine's. How did that happen? She rode me for... Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> she was riding on the back of my motorcycle <laughs> oh, all it. afternoon. That's awesome. Nice, nice recalibration of that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, give us a little introduction. Tell us who you are. What you do, why you're here, and uh, and your company because it's very very interesting. All of it is. Well, I am John Brostrom, aka JB. Uh, when the pack is together, I'm Papa. Yep. That name given to me by my three granddaughters, soon to be fourth sibling. Yeah. What a great story that is. Oh yeah. How they come up with that, Papa? Yeah. Um, and then how that evolved into your nickname with the pack well the you know the granddaughters give us that name we we don't really get to choose our <laughs> grandparent names um you know uh, mike stromalio who you'll talk to later probably yeah. is bapa which is very italian but as the pack formed and we decided to formalize this thing and and have vests and patches and pretend we're the sons of anarchy kind of a deal <laughs> Although, when you look in the back of our patch and we're sponsored by the likes of Sharp and Konica Minolta, uh, people just kind of laugh at kind of the daughters of anarchy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but we had to have nicknames. you got to have a yeah. nickname. The first, the, the founding members, we kind of chose our own. But mm -hmm. after that, we supply the moniker. Yes. They get to be creative. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got J-Bro and Boner and Rip Thank God for Yellowstone <laughs> and the captain and and all sorts judge. of judge. I saw judge. the judge. Yes, yes. Gordito. You know what that stands for? That's that's cute little fat guy. <laughs> that's it's, funny. it's true. But he's one of the founding members, so he actually gave that to himself. Oh okay. my gosh, which is beautiful. Yes, and Mike's Paco. Paco was a name uh, given to him by his baseball playing buddies back in his days on uh, Taylor and Halstead in Chicago. Got it. Back in the prime. <laughs> <laughs> so um, talk a little bit about the pack. The pack is something that has. The Patriots pack. The, excuse yep. me. The, the Patriots pack. It was formed organically and kind of grown organically out of a bucket list trip for Mike Stramalio, a.k.a. Paco. And uh, I think it was 2013, he asked me to join him on a ride to Rolling Thunder. It was a bucket list item for him. And it was nothing more than getting him to and from. And those that remember back then and, and read the blogs that I normally do, uh, I quite literally dragged his rear end across country <laughs> because that's 10 years ago now. And his physical body is 10 years younger today than it was 10 years ago. And he was a, a physical broken man at the time. I was quite literally lifting his leg up in the mornings to put it on the motorcycle and get him to be standing up. And they'd have to stay there until the end of the day. We'd get to a gas stop, and he'd stay there, and I'd put the fuel in his tank. He, he just we literally dragged him across country. It was kind of an epic <clears throat> trip. Wow. And we all know that he is a prolific social media person. Yes. Uh, people have asked him how many people are on his social media team. Right. <laughs> and really it's two, the two thumbs <laughs> as he's lying in bed, <laughs> Where, wherever he is, he's yeah. just prolific. Yeah. So he did the same thing and it kind of caught on. 
So we were asked to do it again the next year, and people wanted to donate. They thought it was a charity ride, so, okay, it became a charity ride. It was never an intention. Yeah. And we raised a bunch of money for that first charity. And then the industry kind of jumps in because Mike's, I call him the prince of the office equipment industry. And, uh, you know, Gavin came along and, and decided to formalize it and get these vests and, mm -hmm. and people wanted to join. And now 10 years later, it, it's just incredible. And yeah. it was never an intention. It was very organically grown. That's cool. And the, the fund, the Jillian Fund, is who uh, you're raising money for for this ride in the past few rides, correct? Thus far, we personally have raised $400,000. Wow. It makes me emotional. That's awesome. Yeah. I think the fund has raised over $3 million, Yeah. Um, just shy of $4 million, and we're 10% of that. It's yeah. just crazy. And probably the, the catalyst for much more of that as we have attended their, their big banquets and everybody's in their tuxedo and their ball gown and we're dressed like this. <laughs> it's, it's a riot. It's just a riot. And we, we travel around the country and you know, do impromptu arias. And people come up to us in elevators and just hear the story, want to give us five bucks to the yeah. donation. Mm -hmm. And that, I've always said that $5 probably means more to them than the big check we'll collect here today. Yeah, It's just... It's just an incredible experience, and wow. it's it's a brotherhood that's been developed. These are these are people, you know, we probably would never have met, yeah. But they want to join, and and you've seen now that you've been involved in it with it just for forty eight hours. It's a it's a true brotherhood, right? In fact, we bicker like brothers. <laughs> you do. I've seen. heard it. <laughs> I was thinking they bickered like old ladies. That's what it sounds like. It, well, very much like that, too. <laughs> That's a great story. Yes. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your business, because I think it's as unique as unique gets. <laughs> well, uh, quickly, my first business was in this industry, which is why I've been involved. Um, I had one of the original ERPs in mm. the industry, and um, uh, you know that was sold back in 2007. And long story short... I have, uh, through investment, been involved in a couple of sports software companies. And the last one really being a sports technology company. And it's called Fan Controlled Sports and Entertainment. Mm -hmm. The first sport was Fan Controlled Football. Yeah. And uh, the best way to explain it is taking Madden NFL, mm -hmm. fantasy football, maybe a little Hunger Games sprinkled in, <laughs> with um, real indoor arena-style football. Yeah. I mean, these are real athletes. It's not a virtual video game. And th these are people that have been in the NFL, mm -hmm. uh, want to get back to the NFL. They're not ready to give up on their, their football dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, last year we had uh, um, you know, Mr. Football, Johnny right. Football, yeah. um, Johnny Manziel throwing to... Hall of Famer, Terrell Owens. Right. Huh. It, it's just incredible. But the premise is it's fan controlled. Uh, uh, you know, getting ahead of myself so much so that we have terminated the contract of a, of a head coach because he's overriding the plays that the fans oh, would call. Oh, really? It is fan controlled football. How do you, how do you determine what, what fan or which fans call what plays? How does that work? Well... Um, on game day, there's a, there's a team of, you know, we call it the tech team that uh, I help produce. Uh, there's a, there's a, a booth, you know, with the talking heads. There's a production truck because we're broadcast on some of the NBC channels. Our next season will be ESPN. Mm. Uh, first season was just Twitch. Mm. But what happens is when a play ends, uh, there's a there's a kid sitting in front of me that types in down and distance and the time of the game and, and some pertinent information. Not full stats. There's another guy doing all of that. Um, but just the basic necessity of stats. And it takes us about seven seconds, and then that goes right to the cloud, and we've got our own algorithm that then determines, based upon the game situation down and distance, what are three reasonable run plays and three reasonable pass plays 
that we will then present to the fans mm -hmm. in the stadium and all over the world. Oh. Fans in, oh, cool. in yeah. Asia and South America and, and uh, Europe on game day are signed in and they're, they're, they've aligned themselves with one of our eight teams and they get up uh, on their app a list of these six plays and they choose. Is there a, there's got to be a time frame, right, where they have get like, what, 10 well, seconds to put in the play? They get about 15 seconds. Okay. The whole thing takes about 22 seconds. It, our our plays amazing. run wow. quicker than the NFL. Wow. And, and is it like majority, like the major, like – if 60% of the people wanted this run play versus a passing play, you end up doing that run play? Is that how you determine it's, it? It's the, ma the majority <laughs> of votes. Okay. But some people's votes will count more than others as you gain fan IQ, like a video game. Um, throughout the season, you can build up your fan IQ. So you may vote three to one to my one to one. Okay. That also keeps people that are just passive from kind of messing up the flow. Um, and it works. Yeah. As soon as that play comes in, we see the countdown, and we've got a big screen. And as soon as the play comes in, if you are watching on one of those broadcast partners, there's literally a video overlay of what that play is going to be huh. that shows up on the screen like a video game, right over the top of the players that are on the field. And then there's a coach that sees that that's in my booth, and he barks the play directly to the quarterback and the offensive line. And... Play is executed, and off we go again to the next play. That's so it's, cool. It's incredible. How do you call defenses? The defense is, is called by the, the coaches okay. at this point. That's right. something that we're working on for the future. But we've, what we've had to learn is that the, the um, offense on the sidelines, we have to make them take their helmets off because we only have one channel to call those plays. Mm. And they were signaling in the plays to the defense because they could hear it in there. Oh, right. <laughs> it was hysterical. You know, any, any way to, to yeah, win a right. game. Yeah. Get, get an edge. So this is fan-controlled so much that during the game, for example, Johnny Manziel throws a pass to Terrell Owens, and it's a touchdown. But did he bobble the ball before he stepped out of bounds? Was it a catch, yes or no? And uh, if we see that, then – my team, I'll, I'll call to the talking heads in the truck that we're going to replay. And we'll look at it real quick, and if it's obvious, we'll either confirm or overrule. But if it's not obvious, I say we're going to the fans. Oh. And then the truck gens up all the replay angles, and the fans get about another 20 or 30 seconds to read that and make that decision. That's and, so cool. And yes. in the two seasons we've done this, they have been 100% correct. These are SEC referees, so the next week they, they do their own breakdown, and they have confirmed the fans have never made a mistake. Huh. So when, uh, how many teams and when's your season? How long the se is the season? How many games? The first season was four teams in a, in a short six-game season in a playoff run. The second season we had eight teams and a little longer season and a playoff run. And next spring, I don't know that the dates have been set because we're kind of bound now by this monolith called ESPN. Mm. Um, otherwise, we would have already had our second, our third season. But um, it'll be sometime next spring, and we'll announce to everybody when that comes. Before we get there, we're going to do some fan-controlled golf in, uh, in October. Huh. And Sweet. Yeah. yeah so you, you got to pick the club. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And... and you know, we're still finishing what the fans can do. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a Golf Channel thing. It'll be one of those Tuesday night deals where it's one-on-one -on -one with, you know, a couple of the famous golfers. And um, I'd like to see them choose whether they're, you know, it's a left-to-right shot, uh, yeah. right-to-left shot. Um. The short game would be really interesting. Like, if you're going to do, like, flap shot or bump and run. or I, I think short game you could get really, really creative. Mm. Yeah, this is our D1 golfer. Yeah. She would really get into that. <laughs> It's just, it's been an incredible ride, and uh, we're having a lot of fun with fan-controlled sports and entertainment. We've got baseball coming in the next year or two. Really? Yes. That'd be good with pitch, different, you know, yeah, pitches, right. and yeah. What I'm really excited about, even though I have no idea about the details of the game, but fan-controlled cricket. We've been approached by the, the cricket people, mm -hmm. the Michael Jordan of cricket, mm -hmm. a gentleman from Jamaica who's got a big cricket facility in Houston, Texas, 
is kind of on our advisory board about this, but there are two billion people in the subcontinent and the Caribbean that are crazy about two cricket. billion. Two billion. Wow. India, Pakistan, I think we call it the subcontinent now, mm -hmm. and the Caribbean that are just waiting for something like wow. this, and they're all technology driven. This is a perfect opportunity. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. We're very excited that's about neat. the future. You should be. That's, I mean, that's the, that's very bright. <laughs> <laughs> it is bright. And uh, for me personally, in the, the twilight of my professional career, it's just been a blast. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. Just a blast. I don't know about the twilight. Sounds like you're just getting started. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. All right. So let's, um, real quick, uh, I want to come back to the Duke. Oh. <laughs> so there was festivities yesterday. Well, it started Saturday. The festivities started Saturday. Um, now, obviously, UTech is our host. Mm -hmm. And as you'll read in the blog, uh, UTech is led by Kevin Van Dutch something. <laughs> 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 and Christine and her incredibly young husband have really been <laughs> our primary hosts. Yeah. We're Christine all the way through this because you can't have your nickname until you've fulfilled certain criteria. Uh, you, you have to be part of the group, obviously. Yeah. You have to have ridden, which is why she was on the back of mine yesterday. I offered to let her drive it because she, she's yeah. not... Nice to have a bike. Yeah, yeah, she's not a rookie. Right. But the final criteria is you must perform in front of the group your A, high school fight song, college fight song... Some fight song, and if you don't know any, then we'll give you the Star Spangled Banner or America the Beautiful. So I surprised everyone yeah. and told everyone, asked people, hey, did you know the Detroit Lions have a fight song? <laughs> no one did. So that's what I chose, and I, uh, I sang it proudly. Being a Viking fan, Minnesota yeah. Viking fan, Skull Vikings, we didn't know that the Lions had any fight. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember Fran targeting. So, uh, the, yeah, the so I, I passed that third uh, yeah. third leg of it, and well, not only did she sing it, but she owned it. Yeah, I mean, it it, it wasn't a passive rendition. Yeah, she gave it. So did she go rah rah rah? Oh, absolutely, yeah. she did. Yeah, yeah. So she's she's all in. That's awesome. She's the Duke. So that's the nickname you bestowed upon her. Well, sort of. All right. Let's hear the rest. She's been the Duke. Since yep. day one. Since day one. Apparently, the story is her father taking baby pictures of her, and she, she's had her fists clenched and up by her cheek like she's putting up her dukes. Yep. So uh, why give her a new nickname when that one fits perfect? Yeah. I heard there was a different name, though, that was floating around last night. Well. <laughs> Not that I heard You of. may be. Tell me, I'll. Uh, I'll the, embellish something it. about the yeah the cargo, oh the precious cargo. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, while you're riding on the back of a bike, yeah, there's a term for riding female dog. Yes, and you can say bitch on the spot. Oh, I can. <laughs> yeah. I can. Yeah. So technically, she was riding bitch, but the person that's riding bitch is your precious cargo. Yeah, and whomever is back there is precious cargo, and. That's just the way we ride. Our, yeah. our, our primary goal is to get to the next stop with the rubber side down and everybody safe, safe. no bleeding. Yeah. And uh, when you have someone on the back, that it complicates it because it's two wheels. And especially me, um, you know, I'm five foot seven with the arms and legs of someone five foot nothing. <laughs> so my sons call me T-Rex. So you've, you've got to be flat-footed to be safe at all uh, I probably could have just had Christine put her feet down yeah. she's taller than I am but uh, we just kept it safe we and uh, and we took care beautiful of our, ride. our precious yeah. cargo cool cool good stuff yeah well Papa thanks for uh, joining us yeah it is my pleasure this has been a wonderful stop yeah. and uh, we'll be off today to the Next who knows where. West side yeah. of the state and so you guys are doing if I remember right what 1360 miles uh, the ride itself. The ride itself. Sure. There's, there's all pre-miles and post-miles. Right. But uh, uh, our stops are here in Ann Arbor. Yeah. Um, GR. With the wrong colored M on the stadium. <laughs> and uh, then Grand Rapids. Yeah. And then we Chicago. head to North Chicago. Yeah. 
And uh, tomorrow morning we have three stops in Chicago, and then we uh, go to Madison for the night. Yeah. And then we have a stop in Madison, and we head to St. Cloud, Minnesota. That'll be the longest day. Yeah. And we have a couple stops there, and then we run down to Minneapolis for a few stops, and then Waterloo, Iowa for a stop or two. We might even see the Field of Dreams as we're going through oh, Iowa. Oh, right. Yeah, sure. right. Yeah. And then we finish in Cedar Rapids. Awesome. And uh, good, good friends, Great America. Great America. Great they, partners. They've been great partners with the Patriots Pack from day mm. one. And, uh, you know, we, we ride with um, a what I call the Mars Rover Rover, which is our sticker-adorned yeah. um, RV vehicle. And when we stop for, whether it's a rest stop or a gas stop, the, the Great America people have taught the rest of the people that are in the RV what to do. And they come out of there like it's a NASCAR pit stop, and we're... We're given water and Gatorade and snacks and wow, yeah, they just take great care of us. It's that's awesome. It's wonderful as they should, as they should. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, very good. We appreciate well, it was honored that. to. Uh, yeah. we're, we're honored at UTech that you guys are starting off your uh, your ride, uh, ninth ride, right? Yes, ninth ride here uh, with us, and we've had a blast the last uh, forty eight hours, and excited to send you off and safe travels. Right. Thank you. Sorry to uh, leave, but happy to go. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Very good. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Papa.